OK, so if you're familiar with the T substitution, you probably think of this as a useful trick to help you integrate trig functions. So if you've got an integral involving several trig functions, you could use this substitution T equals tan theta over 2 to turn something that's expressed in terms of a lot of trig functions, hopefully into a polynomial in terms of T, to make it easier to integrate. There's actually another nice application of this substitution, and that's in solving equations involving trig functions. So we can do the exact same sort of thing, and we'll look at an example in a moment, where you take an equation that's expressed in terms of lots of trig functions, then using this substitution we can turn it into a nice polynomial expressed in terms of t, which is much easier to solve. But just before we get to an example of using it to solve an equation, I would like to address quickly where the formulas come from. It's quite a nice application of the double angle formula. So we think of sine theta as sine of 2 times theta over 2, we can use the double angle formula to write this as 2 sine theta over 2 cos theta over 2. And then the next trick here is that we divide this by 1, but we write our 1 as cos squared theta over 2 plus sine squared theta over 2, because this is always equal to 1. Then all we need to do now to finish off verifying that this result holds is we divide the numerator and denominator by cos squared theta over 2. So in the numerator now, dividing by cos squared theta over 2, we'll get 2 sine theta over 2 divided by cos theta over 2 as our new numerator. Then in our denominator, we've divided through by cos squared theta over 2, so we get 1 plus, then we'll have a sine squared theta over 2 divided by cos squared theta over 2. Then we can just read off here, sine theta over 2 over cos theta over 2 is tan theta over 2, which is what we're defining our t to be. So we get 2t over 1 plus t squared. So here the sine squared over cos squared gives us a tan squared theta over 2, or t squared. And we can apply the same argument to derive the formula for cos. So cos theta is cos 2 times theta over 2. So using the double angle formula for cos, we can write this as cos squared theta over 2 minus sine squared theta over 2. And once again, we just divide this by 1, or we divide it by cos squared theta over 2 plus sine squared theta over 2. And just like before, we're going to now divide the numerator and denominator by cos squared theta over 2. So it's quite an elegant proof here. We get sine squared over cos squared gives us our tan squared theta over 2, 1 minus t squared in the numerator. And we get a 1 plus t squared by dividing each of these terms by cos squared theta over 2. And if you want to do the formula for tan theta, this is just the double angle formula for tan, or you could use the result for sine and divide that by the corresponding formula for cos. So now that we've seen where these come from, let's apply them to a problem where we need to solve an equation involving trig functions. So this is the equation that we're going to solve using the t-substitution. Now the t-substitution isn't the only approach we could take here. You could, for example, try and express everything in terms of sine and cos, then rearrange, do some manipulation, and try and express everything just in terms of cos theta, so you effectively get a polynomial equation in the variable cos theta. But what I like about this approach using the t-substitution is that we don't need to think too hard, we can just apply the substitution and you will get a polynomial in terms of t, which will be much easier to deal with than trying to deal with the original equation. So just before we apply the t-substitution, let's think carefully about where this equation is well defined. So for example, cosec theta, 1 over sine theta, isn't well defined when sine theta is equal to 0. So this rules out any integer multiple of pi. So we can't have theta equal to n times pi, where n can be a positive or a negative integer or 0, because otherwise cosec theta wouldn't be well defined. And similarly for cot theta, 1 over tan theta isn't well defined for integer multiples of pi, where tan theta is equal to 0. And we also need to think carefully about the 1 minus cos theta. So when cos theta is equal to 1, this fraction isn't well defined, so this rules out even multiples of pi. So we just need to rule out integer multiples of pi, and then all of these terms will be well defined. So now let's get on to actually applying the t-substitution. So for cosec theta, we can use the reciprocal of the expression for sine theta. So we have 1 plus t squared over 2t, and plus 2 times cot theta, where we take the reciprocal for tan theta, so 2 times 1 minus t squared over 2t on the left-hand side. 
And for the right hand side, we'll just expand this sine 2 theta using the double angle formula before applying the t substitution. So we get sine theta plus 2 sine theta cos theta, all divided by 1 minus cos theta. Then for the left hand side, we can actually tidy up this fraction somewhat. So we've got 1 plus t squared, and we've got this common denominator of 2t. So you have 1 plus 2 gives us a 3, then t squared plus 2 times minus t squared. So it's t squared minus 2t squared, so 3 minus t squared all over 2t. So now the right hand side is going to get a little bit messy now because we'll have fractions within fractions. So sine theta we get 2t over 1 plus t squared plus 2 lots of 2t over 1 plus t squared times the expression for cos theta 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. So that's our numerator on the right hand side and in the denominator we get 1 minus 1 minus t squared all over 1 plus t squared for cos theta. So the first thing we'll do to simplify the fraction on the right hand side is just multiply the numerator and denominator by 1 plus t squared. So we lose the 1 plus t squared here, we lose one of the 1 plus t squareds there, we lose this one, and this one gets multiplied by 1 plus t squared. So then we're looking to try and simplify this even further. So let's, we'll take the numerator is 2t plus, then we've got 2 times 2t, and then we've still got this fraction 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. So that's our new numerator now, and our new denominator is 1 plus t squared minus 1 minus t squared. So here the 1 minus t squared is effectively in brackets here, so 1 minus 1 gives us 0, and then t squared minus negative t squared gives us a 2t squared in the denominator. And all of this is still equal to 3 minus t squared all over 2t. So the only thing that I'll do next to simplify here is actually divide the top and bottom of this fraction by t. So we need to be a little bit careful here, because what if t is equal to 0? But fortunately, because we've ruled out integer multiples of pi, this means that tan theta over 2 can't be equal to 0. So we don't need to worry about division by 0 there, so this is a valid move. We can divide the numerator and denominator by t, so this gets rid of these t terms and reduces the square to a single power of t. Then we can actually do a similar trick where we've got a 2t in the denominator on each side, and we know that t isn't going to be equal to 0 because theta can't be an integer multiple of pi, so tan theta over 2 can't be equal to 0. So we can actually get rid of the 2t on both sides as well, which gives us quite a nice polynomial. 3 minus t squared is equal to, the denominator's completely gone there now, and we're just left with 2 plus 2 times 2, so 4, 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Now we're actually ready to solve this equation. So you'll notice if we multiply on both sides of the equation by 1 plus t squared, we'll get a quartic in t. This is actually avoidable because we've only got t squareds appearing in our equation. So if we add another variable, let's say u is defined as equal to t squared, then we can rewrite our expression and we'll only get a quadratic in the new variable u. So we've got 2 plus 4 times 1 minus u over 1 plus u is equal to 3 minus u. So then when we multiply on both sides now by 1 plus u, we get 3 minus u, 1 plus u is equal to 2 times 1 plus u plus 4 times 1 minus u. So then expanding all the brackets, we get 3 minus u plus 3u minus u squared is equal to 2 plus 2u plus 4 minus 4u. So now let's take all of the terms over onto the right hand side. So we're just left with 0 on the left hand side is now going to be equal to, we add u squared to both sides, we've just got one lot of u squared on the right hand side. Then for our u's we've got plus 2u, minus 4u, then we take away 3u and add a u onto the right hand side, so 2 minus 4 minus 3 plus one lot of u gives us minus 4u on the right hand side. And then finally we've got 2 plus 4, and we take away 3, gives us a plus 3 on the right hand side. So we've got a nice quadratic in u, which we can just solve by inspection now. u minus 1, u minus 3 is our factorization. So u is equal to 1 or 3. And then this tells us because u is equal to t squared, 
that t is going to be the square root of these. So t is plus or minus 1 or plus or minus the square root of 3. But we still need to express our solutions in terms of the original variable theta. So knowing that t is tan theta over 2, if t is plus or minus 1, we've got tan theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus 1. So then taking the inverse tan function, we get theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus pi over 4. So tan pi over 4 is 1, tan negative pi over 4 is negative 1. Of course, these aren't the only solutions to this equation, because tan theta over 2 is periodic, so we'll actually get infinitely many solutions, which we'll deal with in a sec. But multiplying by both sides, we get theta is equal to plus or minus pi over 2, or we've multiplied by 2 on both sides. So just to get our principal values like these for the plus or minus root 3, if we have tan theta over 2 is plus or minus root 3, then theta over 2 should be equal to plus or minus pi over 3, because tan of pi over 3 is root 3, and tan minus pi over 3 is minus root 3. So then multiplying by 2 on both sides, before we get theta is equal to plus or minus 2 pi over 3. So we've got some initial solutions, but there are going to be more. And just to understand what all of our other solutions look like, we'll draw a quick sketch of a graph of, let's say, y equals tan theta over 2. So it looks a lot like a graph of y equals tan theta. The only thing is, because we've got this theta over 2, instead of having an asymptote at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2, the whole graph is now twice as wide. It's been stretched with a horizontal scale factor of 2. So we get our asymptotes at pi and negative pi, rather than pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So this function is now 2 pi periodic, unlike tan theta which would only be pi periodic. So we get a repeat for all of our solutions every 2 pi. So we've got a solution for 1, for root 3, minus 1, minus root 3. But then for each of those, you also get a corresponding solution where you add 2 pi. And you could subtract 2 pi, or you could add 4 pi, subtract 4 pi, and so on. So all of our final solutions then, we've got theta is equal to plus or minus pi over 2, but we actually get plus or minus pi over 2 plus any multiple of 2 pi, so we'll say plus 2k pi, where k is any positive, negative, or zero integer. And we've also got plus or minus 2 pi over 3 plus 2k pi, again, where k is any integer. So these are all of our final solutions then for theta to our original equation.